Hey everyone, this is Rick Gualtieri and welcome to Tales of a Midlist Author. Um, as of the time of this recording, it's roughly uh, week three of NaNoWriMo. Uh, hopefully you're doing well, you should be uh, over 30,000 words in and uh, hopefully heading, in heading into your finales. Um, word of advice there, give yourself extra time because uh, I know the biggest lie I usually tell myself is, yeah, my finale should be about 10,000 words long and it never works out that way. But uh, today we're going to step away from that, um, and I wanted to discuss illegal lotteries and incentivizing readers. Um, it's a topic I've touched on before, but what I'm going to also start doing is uh, I'm taking a look at some of my older videos, and if there's uh, if there's new information to share, or uh, or if they really just need to be remastered because the audio uh, quality of those old videos sucks, I'm going to start uh, kind of revisiting some uh, older topics and just kind of updating them a bit. And this is uh, this is one of them. Um, so what is the difference between an illegal lottery and a giveaway? And this is something that, uh, that, uh, you know, I think a lot of, a lot of authors potentially run afoul of, and it's something you really can't because, uh, being a business owner means you really need to like, you know, take a time out and like no, learn the laws and what you can and can't do. And just because others are doing something doesn't mean it, it's all right. And I see a lot of people kind of running afoul of this and, and in some cases, I think it's ignorance. In other cases, they're like, well, I'm small potatoes. Nobody's going to care. But uh, it is something that I think is uh, relatively important because it really does set a bad precedent. And uh, the truth of the matter is nobody wants to be made the example of. And, if, and uh, we've already uh, we've seen a few cases of, uh, I think, Amazon making examples of people for this. Um, I think it's only a matter of time before uh, some state attorney general makes an example of somebody. And uh, I'm just going to say you don't want to be that person. So... And a legal a lottery consists of three things, and lotteries are only allowed to be run by by the states and such. You know, private entities are not allowed to run those. Giveaways are a different thing. So, what do lotteries include? Well, all lotteries include a prize. You know, all almost you know, pretty much all giveaways. You know, if, if I'm giving you a paperback, a Kindle, a Kindle uh, paperwhite, um, an audiobook code, hell, may, maybe maybe a cash prize. Those are all prizes. Lotteries also include chance. Um, this is not a skill-based thing. This is not like a writing contest. Lotteries are basically your name goes in a hat. There's a random random thing. Your name gets pulled. You win, or more more. If you're like me, you don't win. And the third thing is consideration. Think about your state lotteries. What do you have to do to enter them? You have to go up to a counter, pay somebody a, a, a buck or two, and enter. That's pretty much consideration. Um, consideration can also be can also be different. Um, effort. So, for example, if you say in order to win, you must have like you know you must have my logo tattooed on your forehead. That's consideration. A lottery includes all three of those things, and in order to run a giveaway, you have to take one of those things away. So, for example, if you're right, if you're doing, I did a uh, a fanfic contest a while back. Um, that was a skill based thing. Basically, I'm reading your I'm reading your stuff, um, and deciding which ones I like best, and I'm putting it out there and letting people vote on which ones they like best. So there's a skill element that took away chance. Consideration is consideration though is probably the place where uh, where most authors fall flat, flat on their face because you see people doing things all the time and. Uh, Sometimes, sometimes they hide it in like, you know, in secret Facebook groups, hoping nobody will see, but, you know, you know, which is running a risk because let's be, let's be honest, people can take screenshots and, uh, you know, that's not going to, that's not, that's, that's not going to help you if somebody uh, decides to go after you. But, uh, you see all sorts of things of like, Hey, leave a review and, and I'll enter you for a chance to this, buy my book, enter into a chance for this, buy my book on multiple platforms and show me the receipt. That's consideration. And that makes it illegal. Now, how do you get rid of that? Very simple. Think of all the contests you've seen where you see the whole thing of no purchase necessary. You have to let people enter for free and you have to make it easy for them to enter. Um, if you do one of those things of like, well, it's enter, it's free to enter, but you have to jump through hoops, that's still consideration. That can still get you into trouble. Um, and some some authors try to like you know be be slick about that and hide it like you know oh it's it's free to enter but uh, I kind of hide that in the fine print. You can't do that. You have to make sure that people can enter of their own, freely and easily. 
at least as easily as if somebody were to purchase something. You can't make it any more difficult than that. Um, so that removes consideration. The other thing you, you want to do with, with that is you want to have a very clear terms and conditions. This is another thing because, because a lot of, a lot of, a lot of authors are like, oh, I don't want to deal with like a lawyer or like, you know, legalese or so. Well, here's the thing. You really want to cover your ass. You want to have dates. You want to have odds of winning. You want to tell people, okay, you want to make sure that like, you know, if it's only open to us residents, that's clearly listed. Um, only open to people 18 or older. That's clearly listed. Um, you can find boilerplate uh, sweepstakes uh, stuff out there. Um, I, I highly recommend you do a search for that and modify it to your own uh, your own needs. Um, the other thing is you also want to make sure it very clear whether or not when they're entering, whether you're going to be marketing to them because uh, there's all sorts of privacy uh, laws out there. Um, I know I know in Europe uh, um, they have, a, what's it, the G, G, D, D, R or so. Um, they have a relatively new law out uh, out there and uh, you really don't want to run afoul of that but uh, you want to make sure that it's very clear that you're they're giving you permission to market and they are opting in um, all things to cover your butt and the thing is the more the now the truth of the matter is if you're just giving away a book or like a signed paperback not too many but you can play you can say, well, the odds are in my favor. And you're probably right because, you know, who's going to come after you for, for that? Well, the reality is they can. You're still running an illegal lottery. And again, as I mentioned, you don't want to be the person who's made an example of there. And, you know, the more you sell, the more like, you know, the more I noticed that uh, sweepstakes go up. You know, people start off with, hey, you get a free book or a free audio book code. Nobody really cares about that. Um, and I mean, just from like, you know, that standpoint. But then people are like, well, hey, you can win a Kindle or you can win this. I've seen people like, you know, offering up like, you know, prizes that are worth hundreds of dollars or more. And uh, that's where the snags come in because that's where like more eyeballs start focusing on you. And the other the other problem there is not only are you doing something illegal, but sh but in a lot of cases, you're all you are potentially incentivizing your readers, which is very much against a lot of these bookstores terms of service. Um not to name names, but there's been a, there's been at least one case out there where somebody ran an illegal lottery, um, relatively large prize, but the incentive was, hey, like buy my book or leave a review. I forget which, but either way, it was incentivizing readers with something other than just a free book, and that's very much against Amazon's terms of service because you were essentially buying sales or buying reviews, um, which is a no no, and as a result, his account was axed. So. On the low end, you could be you could be potentially putting your uh, your account at risk. On the high end, you could potentially be having uh, state attorney generals coming after you and saying, "Hey, we want a, we want a piece of that pie," and uh, believe me, you don't we really don't want that uh, either of them happening. So, be very careful when you're running giveaways. Um, I know there's uh, services out there a lot of authors use like Rafflecopter and such. Um, not a bad idea to like you know to put the burden on a, another company like that. But if you are going to run it yourself. As I said, if you're offering a prize, take away either chance or consideration. You know, a skill-based thing, you know, if you can set it up is great. Or make sure that there is no purchase necessary and people are able to enter it easily and without jumping through hoops. Um, I know uh, I know. one big consideration I see out there is, well, hey, share this across social media and post, post these tags and share it on Instagram or so. That's kind of a gray area. Um, in theory, you could say that, hey, hitting the share button is not, th does not constitute a lot. Um, but I guess the further you push, you push that with saying, hey, like, you know, t change, change your picture to this, do this, you know, add in, like, you know, share it on Facebook and Instagram, you're potentially pushing, pushing your luck there. Because the more like hoops you make somebody jump through to enter, um, the more and more you are putting consideration into account and, uh, you know, the larger that prize, somebody might look your way and be like, hmm, maybe, maybe not. And as I said, if you think you're going to hide this behind, like, you know, closed groups or, uh, or private uh, Facebook groups and not be seen, um, you're, you're still running that risk. Um, with regards to that in in incentivization, um, as far as I'm aware, the only thing you can incentivize a reader with is, uh, is a free book. So, for example, if you have an ARC team, it's considered a relatively common practice to say, hey, you know, leave a review. Well, here's the book so you can read it. 
leave review in exchange. Um, you're supposed to have disclosure with that. Like, Hey, I, I received a free book in, in, in exchange for this. Um, but that's really the only way you can incentivize people. Um, and I've seen all sorts of fuckery out there, you know, Hey, you know, if buy my book and I'll do this for you. You know, I've, I've seen authors doing swaps like that, like, you know, Hey, I'll, I'll promote your book if you buy mine. And again, against terms of service, you're incentivizing sales or reviews. Don't do that. All right. So that's about, uh, that's about, uh, covering this. And, and, you know, I know, I know this is a, this is a rehash of an earlier one, but once again, you know, it's kind of remastering it, you know, re, you know, offering new thoughts. As I said, relatively recently, somebody did lose their account, uh, because of, uh, because of this a relatively big name out there. And, uh, you know, you don't want to be that person, you know, and just because others are doing it doesn't mean you should too. Learn the laws. You're a business owner. There really isn't any excuse for that. All right. My name is Rick Gualtieri. Um, good luck with Nano as usual. And uh, I will talk to you again really soon.